Hello and welcome to your lesson three exercise. Now this exercise is intended to be completed after you finish lesson three of the beginner series. If you haven't watched any of it yet, I uh, highly recommend that you start at lesson one. So check it out in the upper right hand corner or in the description below. All right, so what have we got here? Lesson three was about stack views. So this exercise really is to uh, help you get more familiar with them. And that's kind of a hint. So again, I have the assets for you to download in the link below. Uh, fire up a brand new single view application Xcode project and try to complete this user interface um, by yourself. Now, pause the video to do that because from this point on, I'll be showing you how to do it. If you get stuck, you can't get something to look right, then come back to this video and watch the solution. All right, let's do it. So here I've got a brand new Xcode project. We're gonna start a single view app and I'm gonna call this the lesson three exercise solution. And I'm just gonna save it on my desktop here. And we're gonna go into the asset library and add all of our image assets. Now this one, this exercise was, uh, it seemed kind of trivial, but I actually threw you a curveball. You might have encountered it if you tried it out. You might have gotten some auto layout conflicts that you couldn't resolve and I will tell you how to resolve them in this exercise. All right, so first of all, why don't we go into our view here, go into the attribute inspector and change the background to black. Now you could have done this or you could have added like a view that fit all four edges and then set that to black. That's okay as well. But uh, just setting the background for this view is probably the easiest thing you could do. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is open up this object library and add a label. So you can also click this icon right there. Let's add the label. Let's set it to white immediately so that we can see where it is. Click open this alignment menu. We're going to horizontally align it in the container. And we're gonna then add new constraints and we're gonna add, uh, let's say 10 from the top. Constraint to margins is on and it's relative to the safe area so that this label doesn't get covered by the notch. So let's say fitness friends. And I'm gonna change the font uh, and it doesn't really matter what you change it to because the exercise, it's kind of irrelevant to the point of the exercise. But, you know, if you want to, you can do it. So that's our label right there. Now, the next thing to do is to um, organize the three images below it so that they uh, have an equal amount of spacing. So the easiest way to do this is using a stack view, vertical stack view. We're gonna add it right here. Now you didn't have to use a stack view. You could have specified auto layout constraints manually for the three different images, and that would be fine. You'd get the same result. There's always multiple ways to do things, but uh, let's try to use the stack view because that's what we learned in this lesson. Now I'm gonna make it so that it sticks to the left, right, and bottom edges of this view, and it's gonna be 10 points below the label. So let's set some constraints for this guy. Enable all four, uncheck constraint to margins, the top one is going to be relative to the label, so make sure that that's set to that. And the left is gonna be relative to the view, right is gonna be relative to the view, and the bottom is going to be relative to the view. All right, so the top is gonna to be 10, and zero, zero, and zero. All right, so we're gonna have that. Now the next thing we're gonna do is to add the image views into the slack, uh, stack view. So let's drag it in here. Oops, there we go. So make sure you put the image view inside the stack view. Uh, when you collapse the stack view, the image view should be tucked inside like that. We're gonna add another two, boom, and boom. So it's flipping out a little bit because it doesn't know what the sizes are and how much space it should give each image view. So go ahead and click your stack view, click on distribution here, and we're gonna say fill equally. So that's gonna give an equal amount of space to each image view. Another thing you'll probably wanna do is click each of these image views and enable clip to bounds. And that's going to make sure that if the image overflows out of the image view, that that overflow portion gets clipped and it's not going to cover the image view beside it or something like that. 
So here we've kind of got our basic um, framework. Now all that's left to do is set the image property of each of these image views. So let's go ahead and click our first image view and set the image. So we're gonna set this to barbell, set this to beach, we're gonna set this to running. Now notice as soon as I do that, um, we start to get all of these conflicts because what's actually happening is that the, the image view is overflowing the bottom of the screen. You see, we have a constraint that says that the stack view should be zero from the bottom. But because the three images, the height, the combined heights uh, is more than the height of the stack view, um, it's, it doesn't know what to do. So basically there's not enough vertical space on this screen to accommodate all of my uh, content. See, so, so just going from the top, we have this little red constraint here that's 10 points, then we have the label, then we have another constraint or margin that is 10 points, and then we have this stack view, uh, which is supposed to be zero to the bottom, and it's got three image views inside, and these three images combined have a bigger height than the height of the stack view. So Xcode doesn't know what to do. What I want it to do is for it to squish the stack view, you know, just take up whatever space it can remaining, uh, and then equally distribute that space to the three images, right? So there's actually a mechanism to tell Xcode when there's not enough space, as in this scenario, which elements should get squished or have a higher chance or priority of getting squished and which elements should never be squished, all right? And that is called vertical compression, uh, well, content compression resistance priority. And you can specify it for the horizontal and vertical because sometimes there's not enough vertical space and sometimes there's not enough horizontal space. Now this is it's always really confusing to me, especially in the beginning and you have to think about it as the higher the priority, the less likely it's gonna get squished, right? Because this is compression resistance priority, okay? So wh whichever element has the highest resistance priority, that element is not gonna get like truncated or squished or anything like that. If there's not enough space, the element with the lowest priority actually is going to get squished first. So I can fix this problem simply by clicking on the label here and then going down to content compression resistance priority. This is in the size inspector, by the way. And going down to the vertical part, by default, it's all set to 750. That's why Xcode is so confused because all of the elements have the same priority. So it doesn't know who to, uh, which element to uh, compress. Right, so we're going to up the priority on the vertical axis for this label because you know, if there's not enough space, I don't want that label to get squished. I would rather squish that stack view a little bit and have smaller images, right? Would you agree? So we're gonna just up this priority. You know, you can up it a couple of points and you can see that it immediately solves this problem. So I know I didn't teach you guys this in lesson three, at least I don't think I did. And so that's why it was a little bit of a curveball. <laughs> so I hope you didn't, I hope I didn't waste too much of your time, but I don't think it's a waste of time. Even if you spent a ton of time trying to figure this out, I'm positive that you learned something out of that experience and that you became, you know, more, um, more familiar with auto layout because of it. Now, if you take a look at this content hugging priority, I want to briefly touch upon this as well. Um, and this is, when there is too much space. So this is kind of like the opposite of the scenario that we had here. Let's say that you or, um, your iPhone app gets viewed on an iPad or something like that, or a bigger iPhone and there's tons of space. Now, which element is going to maintain its size and which elements are going to uh, automatically enlarge to fill up the space? So that's what content hugging priority is. And again, it's specified in the opposite way. Content hugging as in retaining the same size. That's kind of what ho content hugging means. So the higher the priority, 
the more likely it is to stay the same size. So when there's extra space, the element with the lowest content hugging priority, that one's gonna get expanded or stretched to fill up the space. So that's kind of what those uh, properties are there for. It's to give you kind of like finer, uh, finer control over how your layout adapts to bigger screen sizes and smaller screen sizes. So it's very useful stuff. I hope you learned a lot out of this exercise and I'll see you in the next one.